Hello everyone, welcome to the 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors patch rundown. Before we start, I will not include any ruthless changes. So let's go. The Ancestors Challenge League. Challenge Leagues are a great opportunity for a fresh start in a new economy. All of your old characters and items are still presented in the standard and hardcore leagues, but you're encouraged to join new leagues, blah, 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 okay? In the Ancestor League, you will visit the Kauri Afterlife and defeat 10 tribes in a series of tournaments to earn valuable new rewards. As you play through the league, you will find tradable silver coins, which are used to gain passage to the Kauri Afterlife. You will start out with a basic team of three Kauri warriors to enter the trial of the ancestors. In each match, you can select which tribe to compete against based on the rewards offered. You can examine the battlefield configurations of the enemy team and strategically place your warriors to challenge theirs. I think that's pretty cool. EFT boys, let's go. Then you and your party will compete alongside your warriors to destroy the opposing team's totems and win the match. That's exactly what's gonna happen. When you compete in tournaments, you will accumulate favor with each of the tribes. This can be spent on recruiting warriors and purchasing field items and equipment to power up your team. Each tribe has their own specialities and you can mix and match warriors from different tribes to build a team that embodies your strategy. Fair enough. Pretty cool. For more information about this expansion, check out pathofexile.com slash ancestors. Uh, this is not relevant. And the new ancestor challenge league includes a set of 40 new challenges and eight new challenges in ruthless. Nobody cares. There are there are microtransaction rewards for completing challenges that are only obtainable in this league. These rewards will be revealed in an upcoming news post. Okay, we have to wait for that. New content and features. Added the Forbidden Sanctum to the core game with a few adjustments. Please read the Forbidden Sanctum changes section for more information. That's cool. I pretty much didn't like Sanctum, but I don't care if it's back or not. So if you enjoy Sanctum, go for it. Added a new strength support gem, Controlled Blaze. Support melee attack skills, providing them with a chance to ignite. For each ignite inflicted with the skill recently, it deals less damage but more ignite damage. Okay. Added a new strength support gem, Corrupting Cry. Supported War Cry skills, making them inflict corrupted blood on enemies affected by the War Cry or by the attacks that it exerts. I think that's a pretty cool gem, to be honest. Corrupted, corrupted blood always looked pretty strong when it was used against me. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Added a new strength support gem, Trauma. Oh, here we go. Supported strike skills you use yourself, causing you to gain trauma the first time a supported attack hits an enemy. Supported attacks deal added physical damage per trauma, but also make you take physical damage per trauma. Supported skills can only be used with axes, maces, scepters, or staves. Well, we all got bone shed on all, boys. Log in. Added a new strength support gem. Volatility. Support attack skills causing them to deal more maximum attack damage but less minimum attack damage. Supported skills also deal increased damage. Okay, okay, okay. Added a new strength slash intelligence support gem, Flamewood. Support skills which summon totems triggering avenging flame when a totem when a totem from supported skills is hit by an enemy, avenging flame fires a Mortar up, up in the air, which falls down up on target in its area damage where it lands. Okay, not so sure about that. I think I have to see a video here. Added a new strength intelligence support gem, Guardian's Blessing, must support both a skill that creates minions, which can be damaged, and an aura skill that creates permanent auras around you. Whoa, okay. Supported aura skills have no reservation and count as blessings. They cannot apply auras on you unless you have minions from a supported skill. But these minions take a percentage of the maximum life as physical damage per second, while you have an aura from a supported skill on you. Um, that sounds interesting. I'm not sure with which minion this, which combo would be good for this gem, but Gazi, Gazi will, Gazi will find some minion that is good with this. Gazi, Gazi will find some minion. Added a new dexterity support gem, returning projectile, supported projectile, Pods, projectile skills, projectiles from supported skills return to you. I mean, that sounds pretty broken, but we, 
we will see, I think. We will see. Added a new dexterity strength support gem, Sadism. Supports any skill that hits enemies, causing damaging ailments inflicted by them to deal damage faster, but causes the inflicted ailment to have less duration. All right, all right. Added a new dexterity slash intelligence support gem, Locus Mind support. Supports attack skills that use both or once and fire project that's add instead of using that skill you will throw mines in an arc that uses that skill for you targeting your location when you detonate them well another mine in the game must be broken at some point right no, i'm just kidding i don't know actually about this one sounds interesting but have to see it in game they're not generally they're not really uh there are no numbers here it's just words so we we'll have to see it in game later added a new intelligence support gem frigate bond support link skills supported skills damage and chill enemies between you and link targets added a new intelligence support gem fresh meat, <sighs> fresh meat. support skills that create minions minions Created by supported skills gain weakened fury and adrenaline for 10 seconds of their duration up to a maximum of 10 seconds. Added a new intelligence support gem, Sacrifice. Supports spell skills that deal damage with hits and have no reservation. These spells sacrifice a percentage of your current life to gain additional chaos damage based on how much life was sacrificed. Cannot support orb skills, brand skills, channeling skills, vial skills or skills used by traps or mines. Cannot modify the skills of minions. Added a new intelligence slash strength support gem. Spellblade. Support spells that hit enemies causing them to have added spell damage equal to a percentage of damage of equipped one-handed melee weapon. So you have... It doesn't work on two-handed melee weapons. It has to be a one-handed melee weapon. Okay. If two weapons are equipped, each contributes 60% as much added damage. Cannot modify the skills of minions. Added... A new intelligence slash dexterity support gem, Devour. Supports any skill that hits enemies. Killing blows from supported skills consume corpses to recover life and mana. Whoa. Supports any skill that hits enemies. Killing blows from supported skills consume corpses to recover life and mana. That looks interesting for hardcore. But still, no numbers. Added 15 unique items, including one designed by the winner of the Crucible boss event. Added two divination cards designed by supporters. Only two this time. That's not a high number. Usually we get a lot more than two. But okay. Excited to see what divination cards we will get. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive. Extreme Archaeology with Scrans. Uh, oh yeah, I already covered this one. You basically get a large explosive that you can place. That's it. Added a new Atlas Keystone Passive Lucid Dreams, which grants vast set areas in your maps are no longer corrupted. I think this is pretty interesting um, that you are now able to roll the vast sites, just like a regular item or a strongbox or whatever. I think this is a pretty interesting change. I'm definitely going to check out vast side areas this patch. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Destructive Play, which grants the Maven summons 1 to 3 additional bosses when witnessing map bosses. Modifiers to the final map boss in each map also apply to these summon bosses. Modifiers to the final map boss in each map also apply to these summon bosses. That's interesting. That's very, very interesting. I think this could make farming bosses a more profitable in the future. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, All Hands, which grants your maps have 40% chance to contain a random master encounter. Modifiers to chance to grant an additional master mission on map completion instead of applying a chance for that master to be randomly encountered in your maps at 150% of the value. And your maps do not grant master missions when completed. So they are removing, you're basically trading this for this. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Cassia's Pride, which grants blighted blight monsters in your maps take 75% less damage from players and their minions and blight towers and their minions in your maps deal 300% more damage. So, uh, so you are basically playing tower defense now. That's it. That's all you do. That's actually pretty interesting, pretty relaxed for some players who just don't want to do much and enjoy the idea of playing a tower defense. 
while still making currency. I think this is a good good addition. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive, Speak of Dead, which grants tormented spirits in your maps can possess players for 20 seconds, and tormented spirits in your maps cannot possess monsters. Okay, okay, that, that, that looks like a funky addition to the game. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive, Endless Tide, which grants beyond portals in your maps cannot spawn unique bosses. And beyond portals in your maps have 50% less merging radius. So... This is again for builds that do not deal as much damage and rather go for survivability. Why not? Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Arbitrary Tenets, which grants favors at ritual favors at ritual altars in your maps randomly cost between 90% less and 80% more. Oh, okay. Okay. Th this sounds uh, sounds to me like uh, they're encouraging gambling here a bit. Why not? If you want to take it, you can do it, but I, I don't think this is a pretty who knows who knows added a new atlas keystone passive skill immutable dogma which grants cannot roll cannot re-roll favors at ritual altars in your maps and monster sacrifice at your ritual altars in your maps grant 100 more tribute not so sure about this one to be honest added a new atlas keystone passive skill unending nightmare which grants delirium fog in your maps never dissipates Delirium cannot be found in your maps and simulacrum sprinters cannot be found in your maps. I already talked this I already talked about this keystone in another video. I think the addition of these keystones is good because you have the ability to farm the mechanic with a slower clearing build that is probably more focused on survivability. So I think this is a good addition to the game. Added a new Atlas Keystone Passive, Timeless Conflict, which grants Legion encounters in your maps have no timer. Breaking out monsters and chests are in invasive, progressively causes a schism, and Legion encounters in your maps begin once the schism has occurred. Pretty much, um, pretty much the same as the addition of this Atlas Keystone Passive allows a slower clearing build to form a mechanic, which is good. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Crop Rotation, which grants harvest crops in your maps contain only tier 1 plants, and harvesting crops in your maps has a chance to upgrade the tier of plants of different colors. Okay, I I'm not so certain about this one. W whatever. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Bold Undertakings, which grants fortune favors the brave, applies an additional random option. And 100% more cost of fortune favors the brave map crafting option. So you're basically paying double and you get double. Okay. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive skill, Overload Circuits, which grants League map crafting options. Also choose three random notable Atlas passive skills associated with that league to create as allocated and 100% more cost of map crafting options all right added a new atlas keystone passive skill meticulous appraiser which grants modifiers to quantity of items found in your maps instead apply to rarity of items found in your maps at 300 percent of the value um i'm not sure if this is good enough to justify the removal of extra quantity but i'm interested if yeah, I'm 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 interested. Someone will most likely test this and we will see the results either on Reddit or on YouTube. This is pretty interesting. Not sure if this justifies it. Added a new Atlas Keystone Passive, the seventh gate, which grants all possible leak map crafting options are available while six gateways are allocated. Okay. Holding alt on a currency item or a stackable fragment will now show the count of that currency or fragments within the same inventory, including the trade windows. Now there's no more excuse. If you get scammed now, it's totally your fault. I mean, it was before, but now you just have to press alt on a currency item and it literally shows you the number of currency items that he's willing to give you. So if you get scammed now, it's your fault. Continue to incrementally improve the sounds, art, effects, and environments. Forbidden Sanctum changes. The Forbidden Sanctum has been added to the core game. You will initially meet Divinia in the RF docks at Act, in Act 10, who provides you with access to the Forbidden Sanctum. The Forbidden Sanctum has a maximum 
The Forbidden Sanctum has a maximum area level of 83. Introduce Forbidden Tomes, which are tradable items that are found in the end game. A Forbidden Tome represents the entire first floor of the Forbidden Sanctum and its rooms can be played back to back. Upon successfully completing a Sanctum floor, the next floor is generated as a tradable item with the state of your current Sanctum built in, including your Boons, Afflictions, Resolve, Relics and Aureus. Nice, so you can so you can trade it if you don't want to run it anymore. That's pretty nice. I like that. Good stuff, good stuff. Relics have also returned and are now tradable. Hoo hoo hoo, let's go. That's always good. Always good. If an item because that was if an item that was not tradable before is now tradable, I think that's always a good addition. Or a good change rather. They are locked in they are locked in at the beginning of the first Sanctum floor and cannot be changed for the remainder of the Sanctum run. Completing a Forbidden Sanctum run now requires killing Lysia in both her first and her second form. She will always drop a unique relic which have also been reworked and replaced as we rebalance the Forbidden Sanctum. Okay, I'm curious if the items got better or worse, but we will see I guess. Primary defenses now have some effect on protecting your resolve. That's a really good change. I always dislike the fact that armor and evasion rating had no impact on protecting your resolve. And now they do. That's good. Armor provides resolve mitigation from enemy hits. Evasion grants a chance to avoid resolve losses from enemy hits. While energy shield provides you with resolve Aegis, which is a mechanic that behaves similarly how to energy shield behaves for life. Nice, good addition. Why didn't you do this when Bleak came out? No one knows. The difficulty of Forbidden Sanctum has been increased, especially in the later floors. Monsters generally have more life and deal slightly more resolve damage. Okay, I'm not gonna visit Sanctum, but good luck to you guys. <laughs> Rare monsters can now be found in the Forbidden Sanctum. Rare monsters can now be found within the Forbidden Sanctum. What? And completing a room now requires killing all rare monsters present. Okay. Waiting for the, for the memes on Reddit. Monsters in the Forbidden Sanctum are immune to damage if there is no player with 100 units of them. Okay. Alright, alright. I, I see where this is going. Boons and afflictions have been reviewed and rebalanced. And we've also added new boons and afflictions themed around the new defensive mechanics. The rusted mallet minor affliction that causes monsters to have knockback has been removed. Relic modifiers have also been reviewed and rebalanced. We've also added a new relic modifier for the new defensive mechanics. We've also added more hazards and room variety to the Forbidden Sanctum. The Forbidden Sanctum has also been adjusted for Ruthless. No one cares. Atlas changes. The following maps have been added back to the Atlas. Okay, following maps have been removed. This happens every league. Map tiers and locations have been shuffled. Though, though the pin locations for maps has not changed, most maps are now... Most maps are now initially found at a different tier. Alright. Some of the map bosses you are required to defeat to upgrade your Pantheon have been changed as a result of these Atlas changes. Makes sense. Crafting recipes that were previously unlocked in maps that have been removed from the Atlas are now found within other maps currently on the Atlas. Sure. Some divination cards have found new homes as a result of these Atlas changes. Makes sense. The Scarret Meadow and Tranquility can now be found in the Orcard map. The whiteout can now be found in the channel map. Unique maps are no longer offered as a mission when re-rolling Kirax missions with an explorer's scouting report. Man, that's evil. The Saxon modifiers that causes the final map boss in each map to drop an additional Shaper Guardian, Elder Guardian or Conqueror map have been changed to drop upon completing your maps. Okay. 
When adding the new Lucid Dreams Keystone Atlas passive, we also took the time to review Val site areas and maps and the modifiers present on them. All modifiers except one no longer grants additional packs of corrupted Val monsters. This has been moved to be an implic modifier instead. Modifiers with upsides no longer have increased item quantity or item corruption chance unless, unless that is the only thing they do. Modifiers with downsides no longer have variable item corruption chance. This is now a fixed value relative to the perceived difficulty of the modifier. Bar side areas can no longer roll regular map modifiers. Okay, I'm not sure if this is good or bad, to be honest. Interesting change, nonetheless. Modifiers that add extra monsters are now suffixes. Okay, the explicit item corruption chance modifier has been removed. The values provided by modifiers have also been rebalanced. Added some new modifiers, including one that causes Val Vessels to contain an additional level 21 corrupted gem. Okay, okay, that's pretty nice. Level 21 corrupted gem. Not bad, not bad. Map bosses. Map bosses in corrupted maps no longer have the corrupted tag and no longer drop additional Val items. Okay, unfortunate. The Val Temple map can no longer be obtained outside of corruption, Val side areas, or divination cards. But why? Why? The Beastcraft obtained from Einhaus Memory of Harvest Beasts that create a Val Temple map now creates a synthesized unique map. I mean, that's a pretty reasonable trade off. Not everyone wanted to run Val Temple maps anyway, and getting a synthesized unique map, I mean, you can get Cortex, right? That should increase the value of the beast. We've also added three unique Val side areas. Happy hunting. Three unique Val side areas. Okay, Val side areas look interesting this league. Not gonna lie. Looks interesting. Possible. Maybe I will farm, farm a few. We'll see. Atlas passive tree changes. The shaping the seas and shaping the valley. Atlas notable passive skills have been removed from the Atlas tree. But why, man? Why? was so good map pro map progression was so easy with these come on man and the new bold undertakings and overloaded circuits keystones have taken their position there are now six atlas passive skills in this cluster previously five with each provide maps found have five percent chance to be one tier higher previously four percent uh, okay I g at least we get one percent added a new maps cluster to the atlas passive tree the notable shaping the world partially compensates for the loss of shaping the valleys and shaping the seas. It provides final map boss in each map has 5% chance to drop an additional connected map. Maps found have 10% chance to be one tier higher, while the two small Atlas passive skills each provide maps found have 5% chance to be one tier higher. Okay, that's at least we get something back. At least we get something back. It's not, I don't think it's as good as shaping the valleys and shaping the seas but it's better than nothing added a new beyond cluster to the atlas passive skill tree there are three notables in this cluster swarming hive grants beyond demons in your maps of 100 increased chance to be followers of katosh and 30 percent more divination cards from from beyond monsters in your maps that are followers of katosh okay interesting pale clarion Clarion grants beyond demons in your maps of 100% increased chance be followers of buy that and 30% more basic currency items found from beyond demons in your maps that are followers of buy that. Okay. Voracious throng grants beyond demons in your maps have 100% increased chance to be followers of Gor. Gor. I don't know how, how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Gor. And 30% more unique items found from beyond demons in your maps that are followers of Gor. The four small Atlas passive skills in the cluster each grant 5% increased quantity of items dropped by beyond demons in your maps. Added a new torment cluster to the passive skill tree. The notable paranormal meeting grants your maps are haunted by an additional tormented spirit, while the three small Atlas passive skills each grant 
Commented spirits in your maps have 25% increased duration. Added a new wall side area cluster to the passive skill tree. The notable unimaginable horrors grants unique bosses in wall side areas. Your maps deal 30% more damage. Unique bosses in wall side areas in your maps have 100% more life. And wall side areas in your maps have 20% chance for rewards from wall vessels to be duplicated. That sounds pretty sick actually. You can get two level 21 corrupted gems from one vile vessel not bad the three small atlas passive skills each provide your maps have two percent chance to contain a vile side area okay another ancient map drop chance small passive atlas passive skill has been added around hunting season archaeology tour covered stakeouts and mining partnership notable as a notable atlas passive skills to make base for the new all hands keystone the sturdy construction atlas passive skill no longer has blight towers and the minions in your maps deal 20 percent more damage instead it now instead it now has blight monsters in your maps take 12 percent increased damage the delirium difficulty and persistence small atlas passive skill that provides delirium in your maps increases five percent faster with distance from the mirror and delirium fox in your maps dissipates four percent so has been removed from the from the atlas passive tree the Seance and Unrelenting Torment notable Atlas passive skills have swapped locations on the Atlas tree. Some other Atlas passive skills have moved locations to make space for new keystones and clusters added. Yeah, I guess we will see where, where they are now when the um, updated Atlas tree will be available. League changes. Legion. The Domain of Timeless Conflict now has a minimum area level of 80. Specific Timeless Emblems and Unrelenting Timeless Emblems no longer provide an, provide additional area levels. Okay? But why? These are harder to get. Why, why is there no bonus? Yeah, let's continue. Maybe they will explain it. Additional area levels are now added based on the number of emblems used. Four emblems increases the area level by one and five emblems increases it by two each unrelenting timeless emblem increases the area level of 0 0.5 area level rounding down meaning with five emblems the maximum area level is 84. the 20 percent increased experience gain from each timeless emblem has been removed oh snap that's huge yeah i think legion is not as legion is not as effective anymore when it comes to leveling each unrelenting timeless emblems now adds 10 percent increased experience gain previously 20 and this is now stated on the item tooltip okay so they just nerfed it by 50 percent if you use five you now have 50 percent increased experience gain instead of 100 each timeless emblem and unrelenting timeless emblem now adds 15 percent more monster life previously 10 and now also adds 10% increased monster damage. So the whole 5-man strategy just got nerfed. That's basically it. Okay. Personally, I don't care about that. But I think this will hit some players. Definitely. Delirium. The number of monster skills required to gain delirium rewards in the following maps have been increased in order to be consistent with other maps bramble valley cold river crimson township dry sea forbidden woods boundary frozen cabins silo and stagnation all right whatever actually i personally don't feel anything positive or negative towards this change okay comments tormented spirits have 20 percent more life per level from level 55 scaling up to 50 560% more at level 83. That's huge. What? 560% more life. Okay, whatever. Sounds a bit overtuned here, but <laughs> what the hell? They now have a tapering less damage taken buff, which activates upon entering their range and eventually scales down to no damage reduction after 15 seconds. For every enemy a tormented spirit touches, it increases the damage the spirit takes by 5%. Okay, their IE also changed quite considerably. Spirits, 
Spirits now more aggressively touch monsters that aren't already touched and more aggressively possesses rare or unique monsters. That's a great change. That's a really, really good change. There are always some situations where the spirit just stands in a corner and doesn't touch anything, despite monsters uh, being around the, the spirit. So that's a really, really good improvement. Stats that add tormented spirits to an area are now all consistently described as haunted by instead of something being contained. Tendency changes. Um, I'm pretty much going to skip these. Reason for that is we already had the information about the Guardian and the Chieftain changes and from what I have heard is that both of these ascendancies are worse than they were before, especially Chieftain. Ascendant. Guardian no longer provides 25% reduced effect of courses on you. Auras from your skills grant 1% physical damage reduction to you and your allies. You and your nearby party members share power, frenzy, and endurance charges with each other. Or while there are at least 5 nearby allies, you and your nearby allies have onslaught. It provides auras from your skills grant 3% increased recovery rates. Mana energy shield to you and your allies. I've, if you've attacked recently, you and nearby allies have 10% chance to block attack damage. And if you cast spell, if you cast a spell recently, you and your nearby allies have lost 10% chance to block spell damage. It also now provides every four seconds to regenerate 50% of life over one second, previously 20%. Chieftain no longer provides 40% increased fire damage, regenerated. 2% of life per second or 1% damage deal by your totems is leached to you as life. It now provides totems, taunt enemies around them for 2 seconds when summoned un unaffected by ignite and 10% increased strength. Occultist. Due to the discovery of a bug where Rigid Wake was incorrectly using a fixed dur duration freeze, causing it not to be affected by freeze duration modifiers, we have made the below change. The described bug has also been fixed. Rigid Wake no longer has every 4 seconds 33% to freeze nearby chilled unique enemies for 0.6 seconds, or every 4 seconds freeze nearby chilled non unique enemies for 0.6 seconds. It now has every 4 seconds 50% chance to freeze nearby non frozen enemies for 0.6 seconds. Passive skill tree balance. Added a new fire damage with attack skills cluster to the passive skill tree to the southwest of the Marauder starting location. The Lava Lash notable passive has been moved into this new cluster with which contains two other notable settling ash, which provides nearby enemies are covered in ash if you haven't moved in the past two seconds. All right, all right. Okay, that sounds interesting. And concussive force, which provides hit stun as though dealing 50% or more melee fire damage and ignites from stunning melee hits deal 20% more damage. Added a new Ignite in Bleeding Duration cluster to the passive skill tree to the southwest of the Marauder starting location. The notable, the notable cauterization provides bleeding enemies cannot inflict bleeding on you and ignited enemies cannot ignite you. The Harvesters of Foes cluster has been shifted down slightly to make space for the new cluster. Added a new fire damage with attack skills cluster to the passive skill tree to the southwest of the duelist starting location. The notable, the notable invigorating blaze provides 10% to fire damage over time multiplier with attack skills and recover 2% of life when you ignite a non-ignited enemy. The champion of the cause and bannerman cluster has been moved to lava lash old location to make space for this new cluster. The Magmatic Strikes notable skill no longer provides gain 10% of physical damage as extra fire damage. Instead, it now provides every 10 seconds gain 30% of physical damage as extra fire damage for 4 seconds. The Dirty, Te the Dirty Techniques notable passive skill no longer provides 10% of damage to overtime multiplier for ailments. It now causes damaging ailments to deal 15% faster previously 10 percent the two small passive skills prior both now cause damaging ailments to deal 5 percent faster previously 15 percent increased duration of ailments on enemies and 15 percent increased damage with ailments the vengeance cascade anointed notable passive skill no longer provides 15 percent increased projectile speed attack projectiles return to you or returning projectiles pierce all targets 
Instead, it now provides returning projectiles have 100% increased speed. Alrighty then. Quality on the anomalous faster projectile support now grants projectiles from supported skills have 0 to 1%, 0 to 10% chance to return to you, previously 0 to 60%. The Timeless Jewel Exclusive Strength of Blood Keystone no longer provides 1% less damage taken for every 2% life recovery speed. The Timeless Jewel Exclusive Strength of Blood Keystone no longer provides 1% less damage taken for every 2% life recovery per second from Leech. Instead, it now provides 2% additional physical damage reduction for every 3% life recovery per second from Leech. Added a new charge mastery. Nearby enemies cannot gain... Power, Frenzy, or Endurance Charges. That's interesting. And nearby enemies cannot gain Power, Frenzy, or Endurance Charges. Huh. The totem stunned enemies around them for one second when summoned Totem Mastery has been replaced with 1% of physical attack damage dealt by your totems is leech to your life. Interesting. More survivability. I like it. Skill balance. The Temporal Chains skill gem now has other effects on cursed enemies expire 25% slower at all gem levels, previously 40%. So, A. Vile Summon Skeletons now summons one Skeleton Mage at gem level 1, previously 0, scaling up to 5 at gem level 20, unchanged. So they basically just buffed at the early stage without nerfing it. Nice. If dual wielding when using whirling blades you now attack with both weapons dealing the damage of both in one hit whirling blades now has when dual wielding deal 75 percent of damage from each weapon combined at all gem levels ruthless support now causes ruthless blows with supported skills to deal more damage with ailments caused by melee hits previously more damage with bleeding caused by melee hits all right Combustion support now has intelligence and strength attribute requirements instead of pure intelligence. Hmm. Okay, not so sure about that one. Unseen Strike, triggered by the Hidden Blade unique dagger, no longer has a cooldown of 0.5 seconds. Added the Orb Tech to the Crematorium skill gem. Unique Balance. The Alberon's Warpath unique boots now also has summoned skeletons, cannot summon more than one skeleton warrior. How much can you usually summon max? 3? 4? Currently not sure. This changes affects existing versions of the item that have summoned skeleton warriors are permanent and follow you modifier. For clarity, this affects the number of skeleton warriors summoned with each cast. It does not affect the maximum number of skeleton warriors you can have summoned at once. Item balance. The Delph exclusive shield prefix modifier that provide plus 3% to maximum fire, cold, or lightning resistance can no longer roll. But why, man? They, these were great. Max resistance. Hello? Why are you doing this? Stop. The Veiled modifier, which grants increased duration of ailments you inflict while focus modifier now has a values of 36 to 40%, previously 81 to 90%. Oof, that's... That's a big nerf. <laughs> Last modifiers that grant a percentage of life recovery to minions now grant much higher values to account for minion life scaling to higher values than players, particularly in the endgame. Previously, tiers ranged from 51% to 80%. They now range from 100% to 200%. Okay, that uh, that's, sounds big on paper. The Crucible passive skill that caused totems to explode on death, dealing a percentage of life of their life as physical damage has had values divided by by 20 what the hell this changes affects existing existing items oh okay okay. okay he's dead totems are dead explode on death is dead monster balance sun immunity has been removed from many bosses in path of exile bone shadow boys log in this includes, but is not limited to, Aziri, Argus, the Val Omnitech, and Betrayal targets. Some bosses now have specific skills that cannot be stunned or cannot be interrupted. Kitaba is still unable to be stunned. Right, who cares? Shaper Guardians, Elder Guardians, and Conquerors now drop far fewer influenced items on death. I mean, they drop a lot of influenced items, and them now dropping less... Nah, not, not so sure if I agree with that change. 
I like the idea that if you kill a boss that you get a decent amount of influenced items, but all right. I guess we have to take it. Slightly increase the outcome odds for tainted currency from beyond bosses and slightly reduce the outcome odds for other beyond monsters. Okay, not sure if this is a buff or nerf, but whatever. Monsters that are unable to be damaged, targeted, no longer regenerate life or energy shield or recharge energy shield. That's a good change. Itava skeletons in the Belfry boss arena now spawn as magic instead of rare. Good. The temporal chain skill used by monsters also now causes other effects on cursed enemies to expire 25% slower, previously 40. Iraq League mods available during 3.22, Fortune Favors the Brave, 3 Chaos, Essence 2 Chaos, Domination 3 Chaos, Breach 4 Chaos, Arbinger 6 Chaos, Legion 6 Chaos, Delirium 10 Chaos. No way, man. No, no one is gonna pay for for six chaos for Legion and Harbinger. No, no shot. No shot. No way. I don't think so. Especially not for this. You can just get a normal scarab for two chaos orbs. Whatever. Ritual ten chaos orbs. All right. Quest rewards pretty irrelevant. I personally, yeah. Who cares? User interface changes improve the visibility of highlighted nodes when searching the. Atlas Passive 3, the craft button in the crafting bench OE is now disabled if that craft would fail. Quest objective minimap icons are now the same size on the corner map as they are on the map overlay. <coughs> Updated the Kirk mission window messages that is displayed when you have no available missions to be less confusing. Maps that do not match a valid substash in the map stash tabs are now placed into a special substash on the Guardian maps. This fixes a bug where maps with an incorrect tier could be stashed and become inaccessible. Nice. Item further changes. Item class names for gems have been changed to be consistent with the terminology used in the rest of the game. The class previously known as active skill gems is now called skill gems. The class previously known as supported skill gems is now called support gems. Existing item filters that references these classes will need to be updated to use the new names. All right, never think we are counting on you. And these are all bug fixes. All right, that's it. Um, I think the, I personally think it the changes that were made are more or less fine. Um, as I've said. Chieftain and Guardian changes are not so good, but they didn't really change in anything when it when it comes to skills. I mean, they nerfed Temple of Chains a bit, but that that's it. They didn't really do anything else when it comes to the skills that are in the game. They added a ton of new skill gems, so I think that's good. And I hope the yeah, I hope the new leak mechanic will be fun. Anyway, let me know what you think about the changes in the comments below. And thank you for watching the video until the end. I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.